<laughs> Obviously, we got to get to the to get to the trade, of course. Now, uh, the thirty for thirty documentary that your friend Peter Berg did, yeah. King's Ransom. I thought it was one of the best ones. Thank you. And, and that was the, one of the first times I think you acknowledged kind of sort of having a role in the trade. I think yeah. a lot of people thought you just kind of was sitting there when it happened. Like, when did LA first come up as a destination? How did you end up settling yeah. on on getting to LA? Well, let me back it up a little bit. Yeah. For, first of all, uh, that year I probably played as good as I had played in the playoffs, and that that was the year we beat Boston with the. Uh, <laughs> the night the lights went yeah, out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, came back and won supposedly game five. Um, and so we're sitting there after the game. I don't mean this to be egotistical, but when when you win the fourth time, you're kind of like you're sitting there, you're so tired that the, the celebration is a little bit different. It's not as chaotic. Like we're able to control it, like keep the room closed, don't let him in, don't let them in. So it's more All right. family and friends, right? Um, and I remember sitting there and my dad, and I'm, having a cold beer, my dad says, you know, they're trying to trade you. And I go, who's they and who's trading who? And I go, oh, Dad, you just don't believe anything you hear. And he goes, no, no, I didn't want to tell you this. And so we went home. Uh, there was an event, I think, at the convention center or something. I can't remember exactly. And all family and friends, and we obviously were there late. And uh, my mom and dad were staying with me and Janet and... We get back to the apartment. In those days, there really was no cell phones, right? You had a house phone. And so on game days, I just unplugged my house phone. Nobody could call me, and uh, I wouldn't get woken up. So I, my mom was making scrambled eggs at about 6 a.m., and we we're sitting there, and my phone rings. I'm like, who's calling me? It's 6 o'clock. And then it was Nelson Scalbania. Um, and I'm like, oh, my God, Nelson. I figured, well, he's calling me to congratulate winning the cup. And he goes, how would you like to be a Vancouver Canuck? <laughs> I went, what? I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, no, no, they're gonna, Edmonton's going to trade you. I'm going to buy part of that team. Uh, I, I'll i pay you a salary, and you can own 25% of the Vancouver Canucks. And I was Nelson, I, I'm, I just finished hockey four hours ago, six hours ago. I'm too tired. I'll call you later. And I hung up. So I'm sitting with my dad sitting there, and I'm going, geez, maybe you're right. So obviously this whole thing sort of started to transpire. And Peter called me and said, listen, you know, because I only had one year left on my deal, and then I was an unrestricted free agent. And basically we sat down and said, listen, you can trade me wherever you want, but I'm not going to resign or I'm not going to sign up. So, you know, wh whatever they're giving up to you is not going to be worth anything if I don't sign. And so... We kind of got to a point where I knew they were going to trade me, but I was able to control where I was going to get moved to. And it came down to L.A., Detroit, New York, and Philly. And then New York and Philly kind of went away. And and uh, we had sat down and we decided I was going to Detroit. And I remember sitting there going, okay, this is great. I'm going to go play in Detroit. I grew up a Red Wing fan and Gordy Howe and everything that goes with it. And... Um, my dad called me and he said, listen, I, I get, I'll give you a little bit of advice. And I said, okay, what's that? He goes, there's only one Gordie Howe and Detroit's Detroit. You don't need to go there. Why don't you do something different and go to L.A.? And wow. so everybody thought sort of it was my wife that steered the train but or the bus. And But it was really my dad who said, there's only one Gordie Howe. You, you need to go do something different. So that's really how I ended up in L.A. 